Hey guys, Kurt from Time Machine Transport. <clears throat> so, doing a radiator on this uh, Century Class 2001 with a Detroit in it, Detroit 60. Um, I've never done a radiator before. I just know that when we redid this truck, um, we did put a new radiator on it. And we went the plastic route, which I wouldn't recommend that. Um, go, go the aluminum route. Um, because plastic just doesn't hold up like aluminum will. Um, so I had a major, major leak when I was on the road. Um, I was in Washington and I had to get back home. So I mean, when I, the whole bottom, like literally the, um, sorry, I had to get by this. Um, Actually, because I hit that deer, I, I, I got a new bumper piece from, from Freightliner that's going to go on this corner. So actually, because this bumper piece is out, actually makes things a lot, things a lot easier. So, um, anyway, so when I was in one, you can see underneath the two little wet spots. So I'm still getting a little bit of leaking, but literally the, it was as big as this. Like, it went all the way around the leak. It was coming out, so I, I didn't want to waste any money and use coolant to... Oh, you know what? Here, I got I have the product. I, so, back to the story. So, um, I went ahead, and instead of wasting money on coolant, I just put water in it. Um, and it's super cold in Wisconsin today in Burlington, Wisconsin, where our shop is. And obviously it's winter time. So you don't want to be running water in your coolant, uh, because you're going to, it's going to freeze. If you don't idle your truck or you shut down somewhere, you turn the truck off and it freezes, you're going to screw a lot of stuff up. Um, so don't ever use water this time of year. Um, so, but I knew that I was going to have to put a new radiator in. I was just hoping that it would make it back to the shop uh, so I wouldn't get juiced on an installation of a of a radiator. So, um, and because we have a, an AC, a AC um, coolant leak, my mechanic, Jose in Barstow, said uh, it was my AC compressor. So I got a new one of those for my Freightliner guy. And like I said, we get, we get like schedule one pricing from Freightliner. So... I'm very fortunate for that. Um, so anyway, so we're gonna replace the condenser as well. Um, while we're doing this, you might as well replace the condenser. Um, if, if it's old and shabby or whatever, it's quite possible that my condenser is leaking and the AC uh, compressor is leaking. So we're just doing all new stuff. I'm not worried about that right now because um, it is winter time. I'm not gonna do the condenser or anything until until uh, th this, this or next spring. So let me show you the stuff that I used for, excuse the, my son Ace cleaned the shop. My father-in-law's power washing rig, he built this stand and now it's kind of in the way. So anyways, I'm putting in our wood burning stove. We got all, a lot of wood split over the last couple days. So this right here, I got on Amazon and it truly does work i mean i had a massive 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 um leak and this stuff it's cold this stuff worked amazing absolutely amazing so what i did was um i looked on the reviews and a guy said that you have to make sure your coolant is topped off and then shake this really, really, really well. And this stuff isn't expensive. I think I bought four of them or five of them for, I think they're like five something a piece, I think, or maybe eight bucks a piece. But this is a nice ace in the hole to carry in your truck in case you do have a coolant leak because you're going to get juice probably two grand, if not three grand probably with the parts and the shop labor to, to pull the old radiator and put a new one in. That's my guess. I don't know. Um, I try to do a lot of, and I am not a mechanic. I don't pretend to be a mechanic, um, but I try to do stuff myself to save money. So this stuff, when I first had the coolant leak a few months back, um, I tried it. And the review said, top the, um, the, the one guy who actually worked at like Advance Auto or AutoZone, one of the parts people, he said he was really skeptical, but he tried it anyways. 
and he topped off his coolant. Then he shook this stuff up really well, and you just dump it into your coolant reservoir, um, and you run it. You run your motor. You got to drive it. Don't just idle it. You got to drive it for about, I, I would say, probably a half hour, and this was last summer when I did it. So, And then you have to crank your... Um, your heat up full blast. So it was in the summertime. It was pretty hot. I did it for about an hour. Um, so I'd say between a half hour and an hour, run your motor. I uh, use I used two of them. I didn't use one. I used two of these, um, and it actually sealed it up. It stopped leaking. But then a few months later, I was in Washington just uh, I don't know three weeks ago or something like that. Um, had to come back home for a wedding, and then. My mom passed, so we had her in hospice, so I've been home a little bit longer, so now we're dealing with the death of my mom, so uh, today's her birthday, so it's kind of hard. But, um, so then, when the when I saw that I had an enormous pool of coolant and water on the ground, um, I uh, put, I had two more of these left, these two, and I shook it up really well, and it was it was cold out that day, so I didn't mind running the heat. So I put two of them in there. You got you to gotta shake this stuff up really well, very well. I'd probably say at least a minute. Shake it up and then dump it in your reservoir and idle or run the truck on full blast heat. And I was able to run it for a few hours because it was cold out in Washington. And uh, it, it sealed it up. I, it absolutely sealed it up. Not even, I mean, I have, it looks like I have a small leak back. But anyway, so that's, that's the stuff I used for the coolant leak. And it worked, but I'm a realist. It's not going to last forever. So this is the new radiator. Um, I'll show you the part number. Now this is, uh, my price on this was uh, 400 and something. If you just go to, and, and, and I went on Amazon the first time to get that plastic radiator and it was cheaper. Um, but my parts guy said all we have is the aluminum in stock and it was like almost eight hundred dollars for the for the radiator but with my discount it was like four something so this i, I would I, like i said i would recommend just doing the aluminum right away um getting the call and uh so it's that right there but i don't think that that's the freight liner part i believe this is the freight liner part here that's your that's your part number. So put it on pause and write it down. That's your part number for your radiator. Then if you are doing a condenser, which we are, this is your condenser. And there's sorry. There's a number there on the box. I don't think that's the Freightliner part, but I could be wrong. Um Maybe it is. Yeah, that's the only number on the box. So it's got to be your, it's got to be your part number, or just call. If you're ordering this stuff online, just call Freightliner. Tell them, uh, ask them if they have one in stock. And this, what I do is I'll just tell them, hey, listen. I mean, I get really good prices, so I don't really buy stuff on eBay or Amazon hardly anymore, for parts that is. Um, just tell them, hey, listen, I I need a radiator or, or a condenser or whatever. And uh, they say, yeah, they have one in stock, whatever. Then I, what I say is, uh, can you give me that part number so I can write it down for my records when I come in, I can verify. They're like, oh, yeah, sure. They give you the part number, and then you just go and you search it somewhere else. Why pay that heavy-ass dealership price if you don't have to? So let's do... So you're going to want to open up your hood for the obvious. And what I did is I built a little stand to... Bring the radiator up so my straps are slack in it. Because if you're doing this by yourself like I am, you're not going to be able to push that hood up and try to re-bolt it down. So I know I have an air cooler here that I have to disconnect. So i got to obviously disconnect the condenser, the air cooler, and then that's going to get me to the radiator. Also, I have a broken belt right there, so I'm putting three new belts on I'll give you the part numbers on those belts. So I gotta pull the fan shroud, pull the radiator, and so on and so on. But before you do that, like I said, prop your hood. 
Get a couple empty buckets and down here you're gonna get a channel locks and you're gonna go ahead and uh, just grab that. It's a spring clip and put a bucket underneath here so you can drain all your coolant out. Um, because you're gonna wanna drain your coolant or you're gonna have a big mess. Um, and then on this side, I'll go ahead. Now, I, I do have new AC, AC condenser or AC uh, high pressure lines that I got from Freightliner. Um, so the problem is, is this bolt here is stripped out. So I'm just cutting this with a tin snip or a cutting wheel. Uh, I'm not even messing with it. I'm just going to cut it and then remove it. Um, and then once spring comes, I'll put that all back in. So, uh, but yeah, that's... Uh, what I'll do is I'll do a part two video and probably a part three video to let you know what the size. I mean, I don't think I need to do the sizes or whatever. Um, you just, I don't, I'm sure every truck's not the same, um, but I'm sure they're pretty similar, all trucks with the radiator itself. But you can see this is all plastic. And the core itself is aluminum, but all this other stuff is plastic. So it's it's really, like I said, it's, it's smarter to go the aluminum route. Um, so yeah, so that's it for the video. And uh, I will do a part two and a part three if necessary. Um, but yeah, that's it. You're just gonna have to take off your hoses, obviously, um, and your, your uh, radiator support. There's one on both sides. Um, your hoses, of course. It's it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, the only problem I really see is on this passenger side when I was kind of looking at it. This right here, that's going to be a pain in the ass to try to remove that. So I don't know what I'm going to do there because I'm going to have to take this whole entire bracket off. And that's going to be no bueno. So... I don't know what I'm going to do on that part there. So I will figure it out and let you guys know what I did. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. So it's it's going to be a lot of work. There's no doubt about it. But like I said, if you're doing this yourself, you're going to save yourself. I'd probably say at, at least two grand, um, two, three grand with the parts if you do it yourself and if you get a good pricing from Freightliner. So Anyways, that's it. Uh, this is uh, part one of probably two or three videos. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Ciao.